Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're going to be creating a steaming cup of coffee animation 100% in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. As always, I'm giving you the color palette for free and I'll leave a link right in the video description to that free color palette. We're using one of my free Procreate brushes, so I'll leave a link to that as well. And then we're using one of my paid brushes for the lettering, but you can use any brush that you'd prefer for your own lettering. So I'm going to hop into Procreate and get started. My document's going to be 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 DPI. All right, I've got my canvas all set to go. The first thing I'm going to do is select my free mono white brush. Once again, the link is right in the video description. I've got my color palette right here. You can see we're using quite a few colors for this. I'm going to first set my background color to this medium blue. It's the one all the way at the very end of the color palette. And in your layers, you're just going to tap on background background color and then set it to that blue right there. So now we're all set with that and we are going to create some symmetry first. That way our coffee cup is completely symmetrical. It makes drawing a lot quicker for this. So you're just going to come up to your wrench and then tap on canvas and then choose drawing guide right here and then hit edit drawing guide. And down here you're going to choose symmetry and then tap on options and choose vertical symmetry. That should be your default. And you want assisted drawing turned on but you do not want rotational symmetry toggled on. I'm going to make this a light color, so I'm going to drag this all the way to the white, that way you can see it really well. And then I'm going to hit done. I do wanna mention that this is a bit of a more advanced tutorial, so if you wanna get a little practice beforehand, I have an entire playlist of Procreate projects that are perfect for beginners. Check those out, and then you'll be all set to go with symmetry and layer mask that we're going to be using within this tutorial. So if anything feels overwhelming, check out that playlist for some intro tutorials, and then you'll be all set to go with this. So for our coffee cup, you can see our layer one has assisted down there right now. That means our symmetry is turned on. Whenever you see assisted listed right underneath your layer, so that's exactly what we want. So we're going to create the base of our coffee cup and then we're going to add the animation afterwards. If animation feels a little overwhelming or too far ahead for you right now, just create the coffee cup. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so for our coffee cup, I'm going to first select the base color of our coffee cup, which is this teal color right here. It's the lighter teal color. And then I still have my mono weight brush selected. The size of it is right around 10%. And you want to be on the lower half because our steam is going to be coming up. So we want to leave enough room above the cup so we can really show off that steam animation. So in order to use the symmetry, I'm going to start a little to the right of my line and then draw towards the left. And then I'm going to hold my stylus in one place so it snaps into place and that will keep it straight. You can see I've got straight lines now and all I have to do is drag them up until they're perfectly even and then I can release. And now I need the tapered edges. So I'm going to start on one corner and bring this down and a nice taper and then just hold it so you get straight lines and then when you're happy with the angle, then you can release. And then for the bottom part of the cup, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Start a little bit right of center and then draw it over, hold so it snaps to a straight line and then bring it up until it's perfectly straight and then I can release. And now I can just drop this color in for my cup and now I have a perfectly symmetrical coffee cup. All right, so the next part, I'm going to put this on a new layer. That way if I mess up at all as I'm working, I don't ruin anything that I've got underneath by merging everything together prematurely. So I need to keep my symmetry on, so I'm just going to tap on my layer thumbnail and choose Drawing Assist that will keep the exact same symmetry settings as I previously had. Now I'm going to grab my darker teal color, and this is going to be kind of the holder that goes around the coffee cup, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. Okay, and then I'm going to drop the color in. And then the last thing I need to do is just put a heart on it. So I've got my pink, I've got my new layer. I don't need the symmetry turned on for this because I don't want my heart to be symmetrical. I want something to feel a little more organic. So drop my heart on there. And then I just need to do the top of my coffee cup. So create a brand new layer, tap on it, choose drawing assist, and we're going to use this gray color right here. So I've got my coffee cup lid that feels 
a little too wide for me. So I can just erase away any extra that I don't need. So the last thing I wanna do is just put a little shadow underneath my coffee cup just to show that it's sitting on a surface. So I'm going to create a new layer right above my layer one and then drag it beneath my layer one. So I'm gonna grab this color, which is my darkest color. It's this really, really dark navy, almost black color. It's sandwiched between my pink and my background blue color. And I'm just going to draw an oval, pull down and that will snap it into an oval shape and then I can select it and then use my guideline as a center point to put it right in the center. All right, now that I've got my coffee cup right here, you can put any lettering that you'd like underneath. If you would like to add some lettering, I'm going to add some lettering. So I'm going to create a layer right up at the top. I'm going to color it pink and I'm going to grab my brush. It's called the Jittery Ink Brush. It's part of my Font Lovers Procreate brush set. I'll leave a link in the video description and on screen for that if you'd like to check it out. These are my favorite set of lettering brushes. So I've got the Jittery Ink selected and I'm just going to write out Rise and Shine. All right, everything is feeling just a little too far down for me, so I'm just going to select everything and toggle it up just a little bit. All right, so now we're ready to add our steam. So I'm going to add my steam at the very, very bottom. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, drag it underneath my shadow layer right here, and I'm going to select my lightest white color right there. I'm going to return to my mono weight brush and just draw a few streaks of steam right here. And then I'm going to blur them. So hit your magic wand tool, choose Gaussian blur, and then drag this up. I'm going to drag mine to about, let's see, six and a half percent. All right. And next we need to group all of these together. So toggle all of your layers to the right so they're all selected and then choose group and then toggle up this group. And now we need to access our animation assist. Animation assist is only available in Procreate 5. So if you have an older version of Procreate, make sure you've updated your version to Procreate 5 or newer in order for this to work. So tap on your wrench and then come over to canvas and toggle on animation assist. We can now turn off our drawing guide at that center point is a little distracting. So I'm going to turn that off and I've got animation assist turned on. Over here, you're going to tap on settings, reduce onion skin opacity all the way down to zero, and reduce your frames per second down to like seven or eight. I'm gonna keep mine at seven for now. And then you want loop selected right down there. All right, so now we are all set to go. So what we wanna do is create a duplicate of this group. So we have everything repeating for each frame. So toggle this over and choose duplicate. Now something to know is that Procreate, depending on the size of your document, you'll be limited to a certain number of layers. And so we can add in a bunch of different layers because we need a lot of layers for all of our different frames for our animation. I like keeping one group that has all of my raw pieces that are all separated out in case I change my mind later on. I still have access to the individual components if I ever need them. It's a more non-destructive form of editing because the rest of what we're doing, we're merging things together. And once you do that, you can't unmerge them, but we need to conserve layers. So we're going to merge all of our layers together except for our steam layer. So what you wanna do is just pinch together from our lettering layer down to our shadow layer. So I'm just going to pinch these together and that will merge all of them together. Now, if I toggle them on and off, you can see they're all together, but our steam layer is separate, which is really important. All right, so one thing that I wanna make sure I add to my steam layer is a layer mask because as steam goes up just naturally, it fades and the opacity reduces. So the amount of transparency that the steam has. So in order to do that, once again, I mentioned that this is a more advanced tutorial. I have a tutorial on mask Masking, layer masking and Procreate. So check that out if any of this is confusing or unclear to you. I'm going to kind of skip ahead for the sake of time by adding a layer mask without explaining how it works. So click on that video if you wanna learn more about layer masking. So I'm going to tap on this layer and choose mask. I'm going to choose my black color because I want this to become reduced in opacity as my steam lifts up. And I'm going to grab my soft airbrush for this. So come to your airbrush, choose soft airbrush. I'm going to reduce the opacity just slightly on this down to about 70%, but I'm going to keep this fairly large at about 20%. And I'm just going to paint very softly up here. That way I have that fade happening, which is really important with this type of animation. So in order to move the steam around, we need to have it selected. So make sure the steam, the 
the layer seven right here. I'm going to rename this steam. Make sure this is the darker blue color instead of your layer mask. You don't want this selected when, when you're creating your animation. So select steam and now we're going to come over to our magic wand and choose liquify and we're just going to push it around a little bit. The settings I have for my liquify are right down here. You can see them. I'll make them nice and big and all I'm going to do is just push it slightly. I don't want to push it too much because as this animation progresses we want it to seem natural with how it moves and if I move it too much in one of my frames it's going to look kind of choppy and we don't want that. So now that I've moved it just slightly I'm going to duplicate my group, toggle this down, and then liquefy this again. Just a little bit, toggle this over. So this is the tedious part of this animation. You just want to make sure that when you are duplicating and then applying your liquify, you want all of your components to move the way that they naturally would. So if I move a little bit right here, I have to remember to move this top part slightly too because it's also being adjusted as it moves up and into the atmosphere. So I'm going to continue doing this just a couple more times. So now as our steam is starting to lift off, it's going to start fading even more. And in order to make that look realistic, let me duplicate this. Now we want to start adding just a little bit of extra blur every time we liquefy. So I'm going to adjust my Gaussian blur and just bring it up just slightly. So I'm looking at how it looks. I'm bringing it up to probably 3% and then continue to apply that liquefy. And you want to make sure if you're posting this to Instagram, I'm going to do liquify just a couple more times, then I'm going to apply another Gaussian blur as it moves along. And if you want to post this on Instagram, you have to have an animation that's at least three seconds long. Otherwise, you won't be able to post it. So we need a lot of groups. That way our animation is as long as it needs to be. So I'm going to apply another Gaussian blur to this. This is going to become slightly blurrier as time goes on. Okay, and we can preview what our animation looks like so far by hitting the play text right down here. You can see how that's looking. And I'm just going to slide this over and continue working. So that is what I'm focusing on. I think I need at least 25 groups in order for this to be three seconds long. It may be more for you. You won't know until you export and then check it out. So I'm going to continue a little bit of Gaussian blur every other group and continue to liquefy in small increments. Okay, so I'm on to my very last group that I'm going to do. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm just going to turn off my steam completely. I've faded it out enough where I can now just disable the visibility. That way the steam's all gone, the coffee is cooled down. I also noticed as I was previewing, the very first frames were kind of harsh compared to the rest of it. Everything else feels really smooth, but I don't like my first frames. So all you have to do is turn the, off those groups if you don't like them. So I'm going to turn off my original group and my second group right there. And now let's see how this plays. It feels much better than it did before. All right, so I really like how that looks. If yours ends up being too short of an animation, just add in some extra layers and then you'll be all set to go. That That's really easy to lengthen it. You can also lengthen an animation by reducing your frame rate. So if you come over to your settings and you change your frames per second, right now it's at seven. If I want a slower animation, I just reduce this number and you can preview what that looks like. That feels a little too choppy for me. I think seven's actually a really good frame rate for this. You can also see if you want it to move really fast, you can see what that looks like, but that's going to speed up your animation. It's going to be a shorter animation, so you will need a lot more frames in your animation in order to lengthen it up to the three second minimum. So just a heads up about that. All right, so I'm going to reduce this back down to seven and I'm going to export it. If you just want to preview it as a looping animation in your photos folder, export it as an animated GIF, but you won't be able to post that to Instagram. You have to use animated MP4 if you want to post to Instagram. So your animated MP4 will only cycle through once. It will not be on a continuous loop, but it will once it's posted to Instagram. 
Hopefully that all makes sense. In order to export your animation, you're going to hit the wrench right here and then come over to share. And I'm going to choose animated GIF right here. That way we can preview it in my photos folder as a final exported animation. And I'm, I've am i got my dithering turned on. It may look a little funky color wise, but don't let that bother you. Once it's exported, it'll look like the colors or it should look like the colors that you used in Procreate. So I've got my frames per second right here. Just make sure it's the frames that you'd like. I'm keeping mine at max resolution. If you choose web ready, it can get a little pixelated and maybe not appear as smooth as you'd like. So I always choose max resolution. So I'm going to hit export and then save it to my camera roll and then I'll head over there and we can check it out. Okay, so that is our final animation. So that's how to create a steaming cup of coffee animation in Procreate. Once again, links to everything used in this tutorial, the free brush, the free color palette, as well as the lettering brush that I mentioned. They're all in the video description. For more Procreate design tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every hyphen at Tuesday.com. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you decide to try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.